feels kind of like a book report in junior high. Merriam-Webster defines fishing swim flies for brown trout as it's a good question and or a fill in the blank I think the term streamer fishing or certainly what it looks like to to guide um, and, and tie those flies you know what what the process looks like while you're out there you know for six seven eight hours or if you're out there on your own for one two nine twelve hours I, I get a little lost or I get I think that because this might be the definition of selfish or entitled I think that because it is normal to me maybe that it's not special or that that everyone knows about it um, because of what Tommy has done for years fishing the drunken disorderly because of what folks do fishing smallmouth and musky and I continue to encounter folks that are really familiar with streamer fishing fly fishing in general that either when we're on the drift boat sometimes even before but but certainly you know during that process there are a lot of the little things um, that are new and and a lot of times it's the whole thing is new getting a tight line you know fishing with the current checking your angles giving those you know those cadence changes how fast your retrieve is going, how long those pauses are between strips, what your rod tip needs to be doing, that's tracking downstream, uh, with your line relative to current speed. There's a whole bunch of stuff that really only starts to make sense when you go out and do it, and you have to be bad at it for a little while. It's just like tying. You have to tie bad flies yeah, and you'll tie good ones. Sometimes you tie good ones sort of right up front. Um, but but then your next one might not. This is my own experience. In order to get consistently good at something, just like anything in life, you have to go out and do it. And for a while, you're not going to be good at it. Uh, I, I like to think that as a guide, as you know, whatever this is, um, educator, conveyor of information, I'm shortening that learning curve. I was certainly helped out a lot by tying the drunken disorderly because that was really the first swim fly that it's so different and it's not, you're not using the sinking line to get something down and dredge. You're using the sinking line in combination with your leader, both what the actual leader is, pound test, stiffness, along with length, and you're using that along with all these other things. You're casting the grain weight, the sink rate, what your rod is, distance of your cast. All this stuff is in combination to, to yield, to result in this presentation that you want and there's so many different variations even within the the swim fly fishing realm um, I did kind of want to give the give the nod to Tommy there I don't I'm not sure who I know he's he's been influenced by by Larry Dahlberg among others and he's fished with Blaine and um, I've seen him tag some like 1884 stuff and has done some things with Schultz and they did the smallmouth fishing and um, you know the swinging D came from the drunk which Tommy refers to as the D so there's that there's a there's a whole body of work around swim flies in fly fishing generally speaking 
not even going to touch on the game changer stuff. Um, I, I mean, I. That's a little mini finesse changer. Uh, I love them. There's just. There's different methodologies, you know, different rhymes to reasons for how you approach any given piece of water and. I'm going to do my best to, I, I think, first show what it looks like to be fishing swim flies and, and maybe how that's different than, say, swinging a woolly bugger or just more or less indicator fishing, not on it, more or less indicator fishing with a streamer, you know, when you just cast it out in the middle, maybe with a, a squirmy or a, a Pat's rubber leg hanging off the back of it. That can be a totally effective presentation. Um... I was, when I was starting out fishing some some spring creeks and freestones and, and limestones in Pennsylvania and Virginia, you know, casting some weighted up into like where you would put a nymph and letting it dead drift back through and almost tight lining it with a weighted line and, and sort of jigging it like through, casting it up, letting it come down in, in higher water, kind of smaller creek setting. Right, that's streamer fishing. It's not swim fly fishing, and time and place for everything. Um, fishing swim flies for brown trout on the tail waters that I guide on is, in my opinion, the most fun way to fish for brown trout. Uh, if if everyone I'm not sure. I, I think I would split. If everyone wanted to musky fish, I would probably still want trout trips this time of year. So it's late January and, um, you know, maybe 70 30 musky to brown trout, 60 40. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm still building my business and trying to get people on the boat. So it's 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 been a good mix. But this is this is really the time to be fishing for browns with with these flies. I think there's a little bit of the post spawn influence and and feedy behavior, bitey behavior. But I can't ignore the you start looking at what influences good days of fishing. And I can't ignore the fact that you just you know historically. You have, I, I, I should look at the data before I misquote some of these things. Like in the fall, when you have a lot of these high pressure, big sun, bluebird days, it's cooling down, you get that wind, it's dry. I'm looking out right now, it's late January, and it's just, it's been socked in for four days or five. And then we had a couple cold days in between there, but then, you know, it was... A little bit of bluebird then it was snow before that it was socked in I mean in the last week I've watched a four-foot musky completely evaporate the brains of an angler on the front of the boat and then yesterday was just chaos on the South Holston with brown trout um, doing their best to take the drunken disorderly off of the anglers line um, does that happen in September? Yeah. Do we have the conditions that we did yesterday or today? Looking out the window. Yeah, we can in September. It's they're fewer and far between. Far, fewer and farther between. So, anyways, largely speaking, sort of mid to late January, the you know post spawn feedy behavior, and this is that we're not out west, right? Kelly Gallup has the whole thing. There's there's the Michigan folks. Um, I'm sure there's a whole other contingent of steelhead and, uh, you know, brook trout. Here, it's, it's January, February, March as like the, it's stringer season. 
that honestly goes through September. Starting in August, I like to I like to start musky fishing a little more. So and 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 these are you know where I'm musky fishing. It's either going to be the reservoirs or um, some of the headwaters where you know temps hover in the the upper 60s, low 70s. Um, we aren't really subject to freezes or to water temps below. I mean, the headwaters of the freestone musky fishing gets you know they get cold, but pretty rare they're freezing and the reservoirs are they don't so yeah I'm, I'm going on a little tangent there but right now you know next this month next month um, we still have that post bond behavior and then and then through March April May you have there's a there's different emergences of insects and I'm gonna stay away from dry fly fishing on this one. I I love it. I you know on my trout trips, which you know maybe is you start to get into 70, 80 percent of the ideal state. Um, getting later towards spring when when the muskie are spawning, I like to have. Ideally, it's a 60 40. I have some guys that don't want to stop for risers. That's pretty few and far between. Ben, you're a psychopath. I love casting to rise and trout. I love stopping. It's especially for people that are learning about fly fishing, which there's no reason if you step onto my boat and I'm teaching you how to cast a dry fly with a five weight, I can teach you how to cast a streamer with an eight weight and weighted line. It it there's no prerequisite. You don't need to have experience. I talk with a lot of folks and there's it's almost like they're they want to make sure I know that they aren't good at fishing. You don't need to be good at streamer fishing. In fact, it'd be weird if you stepped onto the boat or went out on your own and you were just awesome at it. Um, it's active, it's engaged, it's new muscle memory. It's, it's a different type of fly fishing for a lot of people. And yeah, so I'd, li I'd like to, to walk through what it looks like, uh, what it looks like fishing, what it looks like catching, and and then we'll go through over the course of probably a couple months. Uh, I'll try to get videos posted as, as frequently as possible, but go through what it looks like um, casting different flies in different types of water and different retrieve cadences and um, fishing different flies in certain ways. Um, I've, I've tried to do that once or twice or more while on the boat and um, I'm going to be enlisting some help for for that project. So enjoy what I got for now. Uh, contact me with questions. I, I'm as much of an open book as I can be and, and even though I do stay somewhat busy um, bucktail tying trips uh, I, I try to make time for people when, whenever folks call and, and have questions about, you know, lines, rods, um, a lot of things that I needed help with when I was starting, I didn't know I needed help with them. You know, cue the video of hidden camera on some spring creek in Virginia of me folding up a a seven foot 2x tapered leader with some you know very bad dungeon that I tied with a floating line just cranking the back of my head with it after a full day of falling on my face so I, I'd, I'd like to be able to to provide a resource um, so many people have experience on, on guided trips and in and, and their own fishing that looks one way for fly fishing and that shouldn't be the case. If that's what you enjoy doing, by all means go do it. If you tried it and it feels eh, this might be for you.
If you like conventional fishing, this might be for you. If you like smallmouth fishing, definitely. Um, I, I found that most of the, there's a lot of crossover between, well, it's 100% crossover in my experience of folks who like fishing, sight fishing with dry flies, they like to fish for musky. Folks who like to fish swim flies for brown trout, they like to fish for smallmouth. Um, those same people like to fish for carp, and they like sight fishing in salt water. And so it's this, you know, it's this challenge to reward and, and what that reward is based on. And people say it's not about the fish, and you start to get into some stuff that feels a little, all right, I'm, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. Um, I, I, I kind of look at it like, like working out, you know, or getting a promotion at work, or getting a, a new car, or you know, something nice for yourself. You didn't just fall into that. It, those things feel really good when you're able to bench press or squat something. Um, you're able to, you play tennis, or you're soccer team beats an opponent that for the last two years you haven't been able to even touch um, that car doesn't happen that promotion doesn't happen because you accidentally fell into something yeah occasionally you're really good at something and, and you're gonna you're gonna find success um, based on you know natural talent almost all the time it's due to hard work and it feels so goddamn good because it has required something from you so, yes, some of the, you know, some of the footage, some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about feels advanced. It, it's going to feel advanced to a lot of people who don't have experience with it. And it might look, you know, good or well-practiced to folks who do have some experience with it. There's a step function there where all of a sudden it looks like, oh, wow, yeah, that looks awesome. And also I can do that. And that step function happens with some time on the water. Um, it's it's a little less gradual. You know, you get to that 80-20 where you can be doing 80% of the things I'm doing, and if not close to 100 um, or more, based on your own fishing and, and your own time on the water. And if if you you know if you dedicate some time to it. As much time as you would dedicate to learning a new creek with nymphs, dedicate that amount of time to understanding, you know, casting and you know all all this stuff. The investment in in a new thing, in a new sport, in a new hobby, in a new project at work, um, whatever it is that you're into, if it's if it's something you want to become interested in and invest time in, it requires money it requires time it requires and fly fishing definitely new stuff um and yeah it's it it feels like a a privilege to get paid to take people out to do this and and it is most days um it it's it's been I don't take it for granted because it's been diff very difficult to to develop a reputation and, and the you know the client base to to be able to lean back on and say hey yeah this is I'm actually good at this um, but it still is so fun and one of the reasons that it is a privilege and feels so rewarding to me is is that when people step up step off of the boat. And th this is from experienced anglers who who love this and have been doing it all the way to never seen a fly rod before and we do a bunch of everything just to get them exposed and kind of see what they're into. I get I get follow-ups. I get people texting me pictures of fish they caught, um, texting me questions about lines. 
uh, calling me and asking me about X, Y, and Z. And it becomes very personal because this, this is, it's not just work for me. So that's just to say that, you know, I, I appreciate the interest and um, thanks for taking the time to watch that. And let's walk through some fish and swim flies for brown trout and maybe watch one or two try to crush some flies. And I'm fishing on my own, um, clearly. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the, that little piece of soft water. Ideally, I could have gotten in there, but some of the overhanging branches right there. Fishing all the way to the boat. There's a little swim bug trying to get some footage there. I'm going soft water in the corner pocket, all the way up in there. So relatively consistent current speed. I'm not going to be able to get a cast in there if I want one up there. So I'm basically skipping that. I might want to hit this, but I probably want to go all the way back into here. Structure here. So I just hit that. Want to get up. Fishing these little, all these little soft edges that might have a fish in it. General layout is, it's shallow in here and you can't really tell because of the glare it's shallow and wide up in here and right up in here it starts to get a little deeper and it, it narrows up a little bit so I would say that's generally you know better streamer water these the transitions of shallow to deep or good to bad when it's in the middle of the river, I call them mid-river, or you can even get mid-riffle tailouts. And so a tailout would be at the end of a pool right before it drops off into a riffle. But it's really a transition zone from one type of structure, one type of river structure, gradient flow, etc., into the next one. And oftentimes those, like the predator lies within that type of river structure where there is a a transition, those are going to be the areas you want to focus on relative to the exact same bank structure in different river structure. And appropriately checking to see if my camera is pointing forward. So This is where, this is not just camera angle, this is wider. All of this is wider river. And then it starts to narrow off and get faster throughout here. Um, this is a super juicy pocket. This is a super juicy pocket behind that tree. But this, this cast here is, it's somewhat unsuspecting, mostly because of what's going on in, you know, visually with, with some of the glare here. When you're on the water, you have polarized glasses on. Now I can't, maybe I could sneak a cast up into here. Maybe I could backhand one into here. Um, but right in there, the softest pocket on this stretch of what is castable, what can I reach with, with my fly right now, I wanna hit this spot. I might wanna hit this spot too. There might be a couple, you know, trout up here. When you do see an eat that is this fast, you're you're getting them, you're putting it on their head. Most of the time in some of the other fishing that, that I've just shown, I'm fishing it to the boat because you need to give them time. You're probably not casting on their head. And, and so I always struggle with, and, and I give people options to do this, I like to retreat back to the boat because of you know, fishing these flies, I'm you. I'm watching, and and you will experience that fish aren't doing this. They're not right to the bank. Um, they're eating immediately in faster water with um, a more abrupt change from where we are to the bank. Yeah, I like to strip fewer times because I think that if they're going to eat, it's going to be because the fly was closer to them. In, in water like this, where it's a little more uniform, 
um, I'm and, and generally slower, you're convincing your your and Tommy Lynch calls it the he's talking about the sales pitch. You're maybe you're three, four, five feet away from where they are. They can be there very, very quickly, and so the splat on the water, um, and and then what you're doing, the fly selection, what you're doing with it, where it is in the water column. I like to stay pretty high, and you'll see that trout eat through the surface. They eat top water. Um, does it happen all the time? No. Uh, have I started fishing higher in the water column? Yeah. I don't think they're eating brown trout from the bank generally speaking um you know they're, they're in specific to these flies they're not chasing them down and eating them watching their tails wiggle they're looking at the belly waiting for their shot so when all of a sudden it's presented right on top of their face uh they don't they're not thinking oh what is that imitating what does that look like has a, an osprey dropped a trout it just caught they're they're thinking splat look up fish profile it moves once bang and and again sort of river structure is shallower starts to get deeper and and a lot of this and it was just I, I say this very frequently that ignore the rest of the river you have to treat this like a creek again if you want to just cast a, a beadhead woolly bugger out there and drop a little nymph off the back and sort of swing around, you'll pick some fish up. And that's streamer fishing and enjoy doing that. To to approach a river and, and to fish swim flies for brown trout, um, in the most effective way, the most fun way, the most... I want to convince this thing to come destroy this thing and try to take the fucking rod out of my hands way. Ignore the rest of the river. This is a lot of water, right? Treat it like a creek. Treat it like a little creek where you only have, you're stuck under trees and you can only roll, you can only get one little cast out there and you have to say, okay, that's the best spot and that's the one you're going to pick. So two or three strips, swipe, I keep stripping, bang. And while it kind of looks like I'm hitting the rod to the left, I'm not. Um, big trip, big strip set. You can probably hear the line going. So you're stripping, stripping, stripping. Hammer it and then immediately get tight. We'll walk through another example of when you're in slower water or when the eat is somewhat different, you keep stripping it. Um, yeah, it's a big fish. Yeah, that was sick. And it was awesome. So being able to, to cast it exactly where you want to put it, you know, read the water. You do need a little bit of time on the water to, you know, it's, it misses. Keep it together. Keep stripping. Keep stripping. Hammer it. And then, I mean, if that tree weren't there, and I didn't have a tripod on the back of my boat, this is going to be a four, five second fight. Um, so it's only going, I'm fishing minimum 12, but generally speaking, I'm fishing 16 or 20 pound. Give you a little. See ya. Yes, I've been listening to an audio book. All right, I, I do want to talk about this moment right here.
Okay, we're going to go into slower water here. You can see faster water up here. So we're kind of mid, we're kind of mid pool, but we're getting towards the the last third of Riffley water pool next drop. I like the top third and the bottom third in you know conditions like this where it's pretty shitty out but shitty it's pretty shitty out but the water's still great it's a little off I mean this is this is everything you want uh, th these are days where if you have an understanding wife husband job kids whatever or just a flexible life um, and, and this is something you like doing go out and fish on these days it's um, they're not few and far between, but it, in order to, you know, have your shit together and be able to just go out and fish for two or three hours, you either need to do this for a living uh, and be out there or be ready to go out and, and just prioritize. So, you know, keep your eye on the three, four, five day forecast and say, eh, I'm cutting out of work early on Thursday. It looks like there's going to be a, a front coming in and I want to catch the, the front edge of that it, it hasn't torrentially downpoured yet but it's about to um, and fish that I'm, I'm kind of on the front edge sort of right in the in the thick of that front moving in here and so we're gonna go to the the video here I'm fishing behind me at this point when when you're fishing slower water I don't mind this as much because you can still animate your fly in a way that is effective, you're keep, keeping a tight line, your line's not getting pushed around by the water. When you're in faster water, that sinking line, it starts to get pushed a little bit, your fly interacts with the water differently. Um, you have to skip spots. You hit your shot, it's the next one. You gotta move up, stop casting behind you. I'll say that a thousand times. I have a five-year-old, I don't mind repeating myself. Uh, she's actually way better than most of the middle-aged men that I have on my boat. Stop casting behind you. Stop casting behind you. Stop casting behind you. you can, next cast, cast behind you. I'm going to tell you stop casting behind you. I'm not upset about it. Uh, I'm just going to remind you because it's still impossible for me. I'm doing it right now. And I have to say in the back of my, not in the back of my head, I have to say forcefully to myself skip the next five spots so back the video here I want to hit this spot I want to hit this spot I want to hit that spot that spot this spot eh, maybe right in front of that little log jam I'm going way back here and I'm still moving so I've already put a couple shots in at that angle fishing behind me skip them all skip all that you have to So soft pocket there, river starts to pinch in just a little bit, I want back there, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's on it, I'll start trash talking my buddies, you see that shit, you gotta have fun out there, days can be long, another, so transition, right, river starts to pinch in here, big piece of structure here, I want back there, yes sir. I'll take another one back there. And I'll, this is me on the boat. I'm, I'm going to be telling someone. Like, All right. Absolutely going to take that too. Now, as I'm moving, this tree is coming out in my face. I might want one here, but I couldn't retrieve it effectively. If I did, I'd have to skip this spot. So putting right in front of this is basically a lay down. There's a bunch of structure under there where a fish could be hiding. I want to get one back in here. I can't get there yet because of the trees, so I'm checking out this little point. I'm cutting this retrieve short because I want to get back into this juice and get a good retrieve. Now you'll see a swirl right there. You actually see my mouth move. Bang. We'll go through that again. So I hit this log point or this lay down point. I'm going real fast. 
You want to get all the way back in the softest water possible. So it's back in here. And you're about to see a swirl. So at that point, we are splat, and then I've had two or three strips, and a fish tried to eat. Or if I can recall correctly, it moved on it real fast. And that looks like a fish turned the jets on, and that's what happened. I mean, that swirl happened because a fish screamed out from where it was, and it's a big fish. It tail, its tail pushed water. And it's, I mean, it just came up right next to the fly. And so I'm watching, I can see all of this. And you can just watch my mouth for a second. And there's a couple other things that are happening here. As I'm, I casted, you'll see the swirl. You'll see me going, oh, come on. Because it didn't go on that first one. You got to keep it in the kill zone. And then I saw it. I was in the middle of the strip. And I saw this thing coming up to it. And it wanted to eat. And it was going to eat right there. And so you watch. Oh, come on. Now I stop just that little pump fake right there I stop and I let it eat just that little hitch and then boom absolutely hammer it so did I know the fish was gonna be there no I'm expecting that here maybe here maybe there but all the you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to that I want a better presentation I want the next shot instead of the shot I just had so right here I start speeding it up okay get this over get it back in the juice swirl oh god come on pause Boom. And then how many, that's three giant strip sets. When a fish eats, I don't know how long that is, four or five feet. Drop that anchor. Pretty slow water, so th this is the current speed where you can chill. This is the type of current speed. Yeah, you see that shit? <laughs> it was such a sick eat. So that's, I mean, that's the payoff, right? That's the entire point of this thing. Yes, all the other stuff is fun. Tying's fun. Going out and actually fishing is fun. It's, you know, it's something different. It's um, it's highly engaged. It's physically demanding. It, it feels good. You have endorphins. There's adrenaline. It's it's a lot of fun. This moment. Is is why people say pay your dues. All this other stuff. Now I will say if, if you if you don't put the time in, you're gonna be disappointed because there's there's casting and getting it up in there is gonna be somewhat difficult, but it's just you know, picking that apart and then it's probably not on your first trip where you're watching a fish scream out and you're not either trout setting the fly out of the water or just you know, moving the fly and not giving it a pause. So, yeah, this is definitely an example where it's like, all right, dude, um, that's for folks not um, exposed to this before. It's it's a little much, but you you if you get feedback from fish, if you go out and fish and you you start to see this, and you start approaching fly fishing and trout with a different perspective that that they actually act like this and behave like this somewhat consistently um, it all of a sudden this whole oh streamer fishing is is this whole other thing and 
you know, what is that eight weight? It takes away all of that, and it's just, yeah, they eat pheasant tails. They also eat a six inch swim bug fished four inches below the surface, and they swirl on it first and follow it like a muskie, wait for it to pause and sort of die sideways, and then eat the middle of it. And you get to control the whole process. Maybe that's why it's just it's just a control thing for me. And if it's not me, I'm telling you what to do. Um, it, it's the the whole process is is cool, like I said. But this um, I don't want to mince words. Watching a big trout come out and do that, and and this moment having the fish in the boat, and God, I love nothing more than watching this happen for someone else, taking the picture, we release the fish. The coolest part of fly fishing or whatever is watching them swim away is that, no, it's watching them destroy a fly and then, boom, laying the wood to them. And for me, the coolest part is after all of this, we get the fish back in. There's line everywhere, maybe a rod's broken. I try to stay away from trees. Um, is watching the look on people's faces that it doesn't have to be a 25 inch brown trout especially in the in the beginning phases of someone fishing like this it's just it looks like I'm watching TV static happening in someone's brain they're just replaying the moment and yes, the grip and grin is fun, but that, and sometimes it's just after the eat. Yesterday, uh, a lot of trout sets on some big browns that we didn't get to the boat, but this kid had a fucking blast. And that TV static I watched. All right, I'm, I'm not sure where that had stopped. But we'll, uh, so this is, I just finished taking pictures of that big trout, getting all ready, I'm fucking soaked, right, it's time to go, I should drink some water, right. Double fishing. I'm not going to pull the anchor yet. There's some spots I want to check. And as soon as I pull that anchor, it's off and away. So work some line out. Cast up into that soft water right under that bush. Hammer time. For the audience at home. And this is just, you know, am I am I recasting every single time after getting a nice fish while still anchored and then casting two or three more times? Probably not, but I'm in this tail out zone. And there's a couple other spots in here that are really segmented from that that prime predator lie where that big fish was. Um, so I'm gonna check a couple other spots here and then, what, three forecasts? Check those zones, pull the anchor, and then I'm off. And now this is, while we're moving, um, things start to happen really fast here, but I'm gonna check this soft water as much as I possibly can. Maybe start checking the tail out zone if you're fishing on your own, if you're with a buddy, front, front person's getting these shots back person go in the same spot maybe you're fishing a different fly and here it's as soon as you start moving fast it's the softest water you can get it's all these little breaks all these little micro breaks you don't really see them but when you're on the water any of this slow water right into it slow water right there Fucking right at the boat god damn it <laughs> that would have been I mean, whatever, I got to eat, and it's it's great when you have days like this. 
So I'm, I'm just picking apart this, this edge that has a bunch of soft water and, and you can see me pause again and, and wait for the commitment and wait for that committed eat. And I'm fishing really, I'm, you know, this is two or three rod lengths away and I'm fishing, I don't know, six, seven, eight, ten strips. I'm going right up to the boat, even in this faster water. So we're right at the edge of the tail out going into fast stuff. Bang, I like that shot. I'm hitting this soft water. It looks like I'm going to want a second one here. Gosh. Bang, right in there. I'm fishing. I probably see it right here. Pause. And that little, that little rod hitch with my right hand... That can also be a way to, to help out your strip set and give you a little extra juice on it. Where you're not lifting up, you're pulling it back. So you get tight with that left hand and then you pull the rod back up into your rib cage as you're stripping. And even if you're tight on your line and you pull straight back with a tight line, that's a strip set. And so you don't need to have this, oh, it's eating and you, know, you tee up a, a set and then hammer it again. Um, but if you build these little things in as habits, they can really help out when it comes to good habits don't form when a fish eats your fly. That's the opposite happens. Soft water. Pause. Okay, you got smiling. So, skip them. I just skipped so many different spots there. Casting it again at him. Okay, I just, I burned a cast based, I, I burned a piece of bank because I wanted to get another shot on the fish that I missed. So cast it back to it. I missed all that. That's fine. Keep moving. You got to keep going. Soft water, soft, where's the softest spot? Head on a swivel. Checking the back. All that soft water. And then sometimes you just have to stay committed. Maybe there's some shots over here, but oh, I like it. All right, we're just. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give the play-by-play -play to the entire fishing here. Um, yeah, it's just an example of what it looks like and, and kind of what the what the thought process is for a very limited set of examples of what the thought process is and how I, I cut apart water. And I do this live with people while we're on the boat. Um, when I'm, you know, when I'm on stretches of being busy, I have to take good care of myself because I, my energy expenditure, I'm back rowing almost the entire time. And I am constantly engaged because you're not just floating down the river. I'm getting you to every single spot. If you're wade fishing, if you're fishing on your own, if you're fishing with a buddy, person in the boat, just as responsible as that person fishing. Um, being in the right place and being able to get these presentations in the right zones is really important. To being able to get the presentation that you want, having the time that you need, being the right distance to get that sales pitch. Um, and it's just a blast. So this will, I'll talk about this until it's tomorrow. And I'll maybe walk through some, some other examples that look very different from this. Um, these sort of cover the... The pools, and maybe we'll walk through some some mid riffle stuff, and and what it looks like when you see eats there. Um, but yeah, this kind of the slow water structure picking apart that tail out, both broadly speaking, of big pool going into a riffle, what we just saw here, and then kind of that mid riffle, mid river, looking for how how the river changes as a whole, and where are you, and what is that. What's the river doing um, to make this zone something you should really focus on versus the bank that looks exactly the same except it's in a different part of the river structure itself. Um, and, and what I'm fishing here is my swim bug. I was fishing the mini swim bug for a little bit in some of the skinnier water. Um, 
I, I like the fishing the swim bug and, and stuff with log jams and shallower water. Um, the drunk is, that's probably my number one client fly and, and oftentimes my number one fly, I'll, I'll kind of go through different phases. Um, but yeah, I mean this. Some of that, some of that shallow water stuff, or the slow water stuff, I'll, I'll start going bigger and, you know, go, go to changers. Um, but, yeah, Tommy Lynch's Drunk and Disorderly is, is up there um, as number one. And then my, I, I call it a cousin to the drunk, but... A couple iterations away with with some changes to to get some different stuff I wanted to see the swim bug, um, and then flies. So this is a little mangled game changer, crafty changer for trout. I I struggle with why I think this is appropriate for trout, and and that this is a musky fly only. Um, these, you know, bucktail presents a little bigger, but anyways, uh, I'll check back in. I'll do some time videos soon. Um, if, if you can get here soon, get here. If not, I'll see you in the spring or the summer. And if I don't see you, reach out. I'll hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. It's bonkers. Talked with the kid that just moved like 25 fish and had a few big ones eat. I was moving my oar out of the way. He's, he's fishing and drunk, bringing, getting it up to the boat. Missed once and comes through the surface of the water. I mean, he couldn't strip anymore. He's at, he's got his rod up here. I'm moving my oar.